Welcome to our video demonstration of the Interlink Collaborative Environment, a platform designed to revolutionize how we approach co-production in public services. Co-production involving citizens and private actors in both the design and delivery of services promises to enhance quality, ensure effectiveness and sustain public services over the long term. Our platform guides you through the co-production process, from learning about co-production principles to developing a network of stakeholders, analysing problems, co-designing solutions and finally sharing the developed service. It makes emphasis on the collaboration, digital integration and legal and ethical considerations. Interlink has been deployed with the lookalike of three specific scenarios and a default portal with standard information called Demo. Accessing the landing page of the Interlink solution, we have information regarding the Interlink project, how a co-production could help people conduct new projects and the phases a process should go through. To access the collaborative environment, you may go to the initial landing page and click on the button that appears in the middle of the screen saying Access Collaborative Environment. Once the button is clicked, a login required page will appear if we have not logged in. Clicking on the login button will redirect you to the login page. Here, our possibilities are diversified. If we already have an account, we can access the collaborative environment by entering our account information. However, if we do not have an account, we can use any Google account we already have or register in the platform by using the Not Registered Sign Up button. After accessing the collaborative environment, a welcome page will provide orientation information for the first time. We have multiple ways to start with a co-production process in the collaborative environment. You can start from an example included in the catalogue of success stories. You can clone a co-production process you used previously and start from there. Or you can create a new process from one of the proposed models. You can access the success story catalogue using the Stories button at the top of the web. In the catalogue, the previously conducted success stories can be explored and you can access their details by clicking on the names of the projects. Once in the project you want to clone, the red Clone the Process button should be used. This will initiate a copy of the actual process in your personal workspace. The name of this newly created project will be copy of the name of the copied process. To clone an already existing project of which you are the administrator, you should first access the project on your workspace. Once inside, you should access the settings section and scroll down to find the clone co-production process option. Click the orange button and a reusable copy of your process will be created. Resources will be copies of original documents so that you can safely edit them. To create a new process from scratch, access the process list and click the blue button Create a new process. A pop-up will appear where you can insert a title and a description for your new co-production process. You can change the text later in the process settings. When the co-production process is created, you will be redirected to a space that collects all its information and resources. The overview section will be opened by default. It presents a seven-step guided procedure to help you set up the process. We will now cover each step. Describe the process and administrators. The first step involves going into the settings section to fill in further details describing your process and set the administrators of it. Once in the settings sections, you may add information regarding several process parts. New administrators can be added by typing their email addresses or by importing a file in CSV format with a list of email addresses to be added. Only email addresses of people already registered to the platform will be recognised by the system. Choose semantic tags for the process. In this step, you are suggested to select some keywords that characterise your co-production process. 
these keywords will be transformed into semantic tags used to facilitate the search and filtering of processes. Select the co-production schema. In this step, you are prompted to choose a co-production schema, i.e. a backbone list of phases and tasks to structure your co-production process, starting from suggested templates. Proceed by clicking the Select a Schema Blue button. You will be presented with a list of schemas that offer sample lists of co-production steps. You can preview each of them by pressing the Preview button. When you find the schema that matches at least partly your needs, you can press the blue button, Use Schema. Remember that you will be able to customise the instance of the process based on that schema. Create organisations and teams. Each co-production process needs to be assigned one or more teams of participants. If it is your first time creating a process, you may need to create the teams and organisations that group people. Clicking on the Go to Organisations button will take you to the corresponding section. We will cover the creation of teams further in the video. The link Already Done marks this task as already completed. Learn about the repository of resources. This step explains the existence of a specific resources section in which all the shared resources created during the co-production will be gathered. Grant access rights to teams. In this step, you are supposed to assign access rights to the resources that will be created during the co-production process. You will be asked to select the teams of people to be associated with the co-production process. This can be further modified in the future. Clicking on the blue button of this step will lead you to the Team section of the co-production process. By pressing the blue button at the top right called Add New Permission to the Overall Process, you will be shown the list of public organisations and the relative teams. You can select the teams involved in the co-production process and activate the appropriate access rights. You can fine-tune the access rights of specific phases or tasks from the Permissions tab of the specific phase or task. Activation of incentivization. In this step, you can activate mechanisms for tracking participants' contributions to compute points and quantify contributions in conjunction with appropriate communications to incentivize participation and potentially reward it, before activating the incentivization, a tutorial explaining how it works is shown. Once you have finished all the steps, the creation of a new co-production process is completed and you can start co-producing. The main view of a co-production process is divided into several sections that group information in a specific way. The front page section provides information on what the co-production process is about. The overview section includes the guide to setting up the process and the activities view in which all the actions taken in the process are shown in a timeline. The resources section provides a summary list of all the resources that have been created so far during the co-production process and that have been shared with you. The guide section lets you see the steps planned for the co-production process, organised in a hierarchical sequence of phases, objectives and tasks. When a specific task is selected in this section, its information is shown in detail. Furthermore, the resources attached to that task and a fine-grained view of the permissions are already available. Finally, if the incentivization module is enabled, a list of contributors is already shown. The leaderboard section is divided into two tabs, depending on the settings selected when enabling it. The leaderboard tab shows a leaderboard with the contributions made by all the members of the co-production process. However, the My Profile tab displays a detailed view of the points earned for each possible task in the co-production process. The Work Plan section shows a Gantt chart with the timeline of phases, objectives and tasks to be completed. TeamView allows us to add new permissions to the overall process and review which teams and members are already working on it. The Settings section includes all the configurations regarding the process. This section is divided into four tabs – Info, Admins, Actions and Extra, which include the option to enable the incentivization. 
The first two tabs include the editable information regarding the project and the list of administrators. The action tab includes actions regarding the deletion of the process and its working tree, the cloning of the project and the creation of a backup. Finally, the option to open the process to any collaborator is already available. Returning to the Guide section, we can always customise the structure of our co-production process by just clicking over the element we want to modify. From the Information about the Phase, Objective or Task tab, click on the pencil icon. You can edit the textual information or remove the item from the tree. You can also select the current status and time planning for tasks. Furthermore, you can add new items by clicking on the plus symbol next to the phase's names. A pop-up will appear, allowing you to select the type of item to add a new phase, objective or task, and its desired position in the tree. The first step in adding new participants to the teams and organisations is to invite them to sign in to the collaborative environment. Later, we can list all the visible organisations by accessing the Organisations tab in the top menu. Clicking on the Create a New Organisation button will open a pop-up where you can edit the details. Once the organisation is created, you can select it and create a new team by clicking the Create New Team button. Here, you can insert the details and members who will be part of the team by inserting their email addresses. Remember that only users already registered to the platform can be added. When users are added to a team or teams are added to a project, they will receive an email invitation that redirects them to the specific team or project they have been added to. If you have been invited to contribute to a co-production process, you can open it from the list of processes in your workspace or from the email invitation you received. Once you have accessed the co-production process, you can access the resources in various ways. You can access them by selecting the task in the Guide view and clicking on the Resources tab at the correct part. Another option is to access the Resources section, which lists all the resources created in the process. Finally, you might have received an email notification when the resource was shared with you. You can open the resource by directly clicking on the link in the message you received. To create a generic empty document, you should first navigate to the task where you want to create it and open the tab that shows the resources. Then click on the second blue button associated with generic interlinkers. Select the type of document you want to create in the pop-up that appears. If you are creating a Google Drive document, you can select the specific type of document and the name you want to assign to it. Furthermore, in the Google Drive pop-up window, you can import a compatible document by uploading it from your computer or pasting the URL. Another way to create a document is to clone it. In the Resources section of each task, open the three-dot menu on the right-hand side and select the Clone option. This will create a copy of the original document that can be further customised. Finally, you can create a new resource by using an existing template. Within the Resources section of a task, you will be presented with a list of recommended resources that can be copied by clicking on the first blue button. If you select one recommended interlinker, a pop-up opens with further details and previews for the resource. The two buttons at the bottom of the pop-up allow you to download or copy the resource to add it to your workspace. After creating a resource, you can share the link by opening the three dots menu on the right side and selecting the Share option. This will open a pop-up window in which you can copy the link to the resource or send an email to individual users or teams that are already working on the co-production process. The incentivization process introduces a point-based gamification system for each contribution made to the tasks. Once the incentivization is activated, all tasks should have a complexity level ranging from very low to very high. 
Each task will feature a Contributions tab, showcasing individuals who have contributed, each with different levels of involvement. Whenever a user contributes, there are two distinct methods for recording it. The first method is initiated by the user who contributed. They can click the three dots button next to the contributed resource and select the Claim option. A pop-up window will then appear, allowing them to add information about their contribution. The second method involves the Contribution tab. Administrators of the co-production process can click on the blue Add Contributor button. This action opens a pop-up window where administrators can add contributions for an individual, team or group of people using a CSV file. After the claims have been added, the contributions table will display the contributors to the process, organised by level. Administrators should click on the Award Points button to reward these users. This action closes the task, preventing any further claims. You can open your process to new contributors by enabling the Open Process option in the Settings section of your project. When activated, you can introduce the needs of the process and why new people are needed. The processes that are looking for people for co-production appear in the catalogue of open processes. Once we have found the process we are interested in the catalogue, we can access it by clicking on its name. It will show us the basic information about the project and the need for collaboration. Using the green button named Join this co-production process will send a collaboration request to the process administrators. The collaborative environment has an interlinkers catalogue that enhances reusability and replicability among processes. This catalogue holds essential software and knowledge assets that may be instantiated to address specific needs within the tasks of co-production process. Interlinkers in the catalogue are categorised into different areas of concern and tagged by problem profiles related to the tasks provided in the environment's predefined schemas. Finally, platform users may review and rate these interlinkers to share their experience with them with fellow co-producers. Finally, these are the links to access the collaborative environment and our comprehensive documentation. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and happy co-production.